Hello and welcome. If you are preparing for coding interviews, you probably have heard of a website called LitCo. It is a platform that offers many coding interview questions, and it is one of the most credible resources for software engineers. I've been using LitCo for a couple of years, and the website has helped me land an offer as a software engineer intern at Redfin and PlayStation. However, with more than 3,000 questions, it's almost impossible to solve every one of them and remember each solution. When I first used LitCo, I just tried to grind as many problems as I could, but soon I realized that this strategy wouldn't work. I put in too much effort but didn't get much results. In this video, I will share with you my old strategies of how I use LitCo to prepare for my technical interviews. I hope this video will help you better prepare and land your dream jobs. So without further ado, Let's dive in. Number 1. Start with the Ply75 Ply75 was first created by Zhang Sung Tae, an ex-staff engineer at Meta. The list contains 75 most important coding interview questions on lead code. All the problems usually use the same techniques as these questions. If you already have some basic knowledge about data structures and algorithms, start with this list. I also found a YouTuber named Neat Ko. He already made YouTube videos explaining how to solve his 75 questions and posted them on his website. I really like the way he explained the concepts, it's very intuitive and easy to understand. I put the link on the website on the description, so feel free to check it out. He also created two other lists, NITCO 150 and NITCO All. These lists are just extension of the Ply 75. If you already finished the Ply75 and you want to solve more problems, I suggest you start to work on the NITCO 150 first, then move on to NITCO All. This list will give you more practice and you can continue to improve your problem solving skills. Number 2. Don't look at the solutions too early. I actually learned this lesson the hard way. During my first year of writing lead code, I always struggle with dynamic programming problems. And whenever I see such problem, I just spend about 5 to 10 minutes on each question. If I couldn't figure it out, I would try to remember the solution without fully understanding it. One day, I received an online assessment from Robinhood. They asked a relatively simple dynamic programming problem and I couldn't solve it. The reason being, I didn't understand the intuition behind these problems. When you are doing lead code, spend at least at least 30 minutes on each question. That's how you build your problem solving skill. I've heard a lot of online advice that tell people to only spend about 10 to 15 minutes on each question. That's not enough. If you don't struggle, you won't learn. Even if you cannot solve the problem after 30 minutes, that's totally fine. When you look at the solution, I can guarantee you will learn so much more and you will build a deeper understanding of the problem. Number 3. Learn from solutions. If you are struggling with a problem for 45 minutes, it's time to look at the solution. So this advice is kind of the opposite of the previous one, but let me explain. A standard coding interview question is 45 minutes. Even if you can solve the questions after 2 hours, no one actually cares. In these cases, it's best to take a look at the solutions and learn from them to cover your knowledge gap. After you watch and read the tutorials, Answer yourself these questions. Why couldn't I solve the problem? Was it because I had some knowledge gap? Or was it because I didn't go deep enough to find the optimal solution? By answering yourself these questions, you will start to figure out your own weaknesses and you should focus on improving them in future sections. Number 4. Track your progress. Peter Drucker, a legendary Austrian American educator and consultant, once said, If you can measure it, you can't improve it. And that's true. If you want to improve any skill, you need to track your progress. And solving LitCo problems is no exception. I normally keep track of my progress in a Notion template. In this table, I enter the name of the problem, what categories does it belong to, where can I find the problem, what difficulty level is it at, when was my first time solving this problem, and when was the last revisit? And is there anything I want to remember about the problem? Keeping track of things like this helps me stay on top of the game because I know what areas I'm comfortable with and what areas need work. In addition, it's pretty fun and motivated to do this 
because I can see my old progress every time I look at it. Moreover, I highly suggest you revisit the problem after 2-3 to three weeks of solving it. This way, you can build muscle memory and you won't forget what you have learned. I put the link of the Notion template in the description, so feel free to copy it for yourself. Number 5. Solving problems based on categories From my own experience, Lico problems have patterns, and similar problems share similar patterns. In the coding interviews, the faster you can identify a problem's pattern, the better off you are. So when you practice Lico, try to solve the problems based on the categories. If you pick the Ply 75 list, I believe Nico already organized things into categories so you can follow his structure. But if you want to get more practice outside the Ply 75 list, you can use the tag system on Litco. Just click on the tag menu and choose all the topics you want to practice. Let's say you want to get more practice with graph. You can choose graph, breadth first search, depth first search, because these are the most common algorithms for graph. Let go with filter and show you a list of problems in these topics. Now you can start practicing. Number six, practice communication skill. In the coding interview questions, you don't just solve the problem for yourself, you solve the problem for the interviewer. So if you can complete the code, but the interviewer doesn't know what you are doing, it won't matter. They will move on to other candidates. Companies want someone who can communicate and easy to work with, and they will test you this in your interview. So it's best to practice something I call thinking out loud. As you solve the problem, try to explain it in words. It may feel awkward at first, but it will help you tremendously in a coding interview. During my last rap interview with Redfin, I remember they asked me a question about Matrix and I had no idea how to solve it. So I just explained my thoughts step by step and walked through the problem with the interviewer. Even though I couldn't complete the problem, I believe I left a pretty good impression on the recruiters and that's why I got the offer. That's a quite mouthful video. Here's a summary of all the tips to use Lico effectively. First, start with Apply 75. Learn from the solutions, but spend some time struggling with the problem at first. Always keep track of your progress. Solve problems based on categories, and learn how to communicate your thoughts well. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoy it. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. That support the channel a lot and I will see you in the next video. Peace.